Hello and welcome to How to Stay Married So Far. Now, a couple of things, first of all, a bit of housekeeping before I go any further. Mark and I are both in the most awful wrinkle tops because we're going straight to the gym from here. The couples that exercise together stay together. There will be various whoops and screams of laughter in the background because our youngest has a sleepover next door and they are in the most delightful position of lying in bed all day eating crisps, boxes of chocolate, I'm not even joking, and watching Disney. Yeah, they're watching a horror film on Disney, the Disney Channel. Know, so What's weird. the world come to when Disney do horror? Um, right. But do you know what? Nothing makes me happier than they're just doing that. Yeah, yeah, just life gets absolutely. really fucking shit later yeah. on. <laughs> just chill out and eat chocolate. I always remember years ago working with someone who, in fact, I had a fling with, and they would exercise every morning with their boyfriend or partner. Did you have a boyfriend when you were seeing them? Yeah. And Mom. No, no, no. And I remember saying to her, this phrase came up, those who exercise together. I said, well, it's not, not working in your case, is it, at all? So it's not true. Did you feel bad those about having exercise. an fling with somebody that was exercising? I wasn't with husband. anyone. She didn't. Mm. He thinks there's another whole podcast just in that, I but not for today. Yeah, I mean, I, I found it a bit perturbing, but there we go. Anyway. So a, a couple of weeks ago on Loose Women, we were all very excited by this rather brilliant um, article that one of our producers found. I just want to find the poor man's name. Mark, a room of name? exciting loose women. Well, we were because it was... Image your, to conjure with. It was your classic headline. You know, my wife divorced me for leaving dirty glasses by the sink and she was right. One husband's confession you might be tempted to hand to your other half next time he does something infuriating. And we thought, mm. oh God, it was a bit a terrible headline really because it, it didn't do s service really to the author... Uh, Matthew Frey, who has a, a book out all about how your marriage ends. Now, it, it was a really, really good and thoughtful article, this, because he was really honest and he talked about, over the 12 years of his marriage, how his wife had tried to make him understand what was happening within their marriage. He said, you know, if you just look at it, oh, my wife left me because of the dishes and because I kept leaving a glass and I didn't quite, we, you know, wipe up my wee around the edge of the toilet and all of this. He said, it seems very unreasonable that she would leave me mm. for that. But he said, basically what he said was that I, he, he came to the realisation that what it had meant to her was that she meant nothing to him, that she appealed to him over and over and over again and over and over and over again. He did exactly the same thing, which he said he felt she was left with the feeling that his preferences and the way that he wanted to live his life were far more important to him than listening to her. And it felt like an act of almost, well, of like, well, a very unloving way to, to, to run a relationship. So that got me thinking. We did it on Loose Women. It, it went down really well as a topic. We got a huge response to it mm. because I think there are so many people that are with it that might be like happy in their relationship, might be unhappy in their relationship, might be in a rocky part of their relationship that this would resonate with. Like, what are those little things that we do within a relationship mm. that our partner will keep on saying, would you mind not doing that? And we just dismiss it as just ourself and how that eats away at us. Mm. So I put a call out for uh, on my Instagram. Thank you for all those people that... Um, can I just can I just butt that, in? That, yeah, of course you can. Um, you don't have to butt in. You can oh, good. Um, so I, the drip, drip, drip effect. I hear what you're saying and I hear, you know, the ex I, 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 think, I think he's gone for a kind of neat headline. But I suppose what I'm slightly confused by it, isn't the drip drip effect of anything what ultimately breaks up most relationships? Isn't that yeah. usually the thing that corrodes uh, and sort of, sorry about this, it really is Easter holidays. Yeah, yeah. it's the kids, sorry. Um, you know, that corrodes and sort of fractures and then over a long period of time, you get the ick and it's just, you know, it's it's, it's laziness. It's, it's emotional I laziness. Think, I, I don't think it was him that was just going for that headline. Just to be fair, he's written this right. book and it was the newspapers yeah. that went for that headline. He's actually written a really thoughtful book about this. Mm. And actually, because there are so... He, he's come across so many unhappy men and this, you know, he's got a huge blog where there's like 
Mm. Huge amount of followers mm. with men coming to that realization themselves as well. And I just thought that was a really, mm. rather than just the stand, oh, aren't men just a nightmare? Or it, it, for a man to come from this perspective and say, I think so many of us make this mistake mm. where we do take our wives, our partners for granted. Because I think most people would admit that a woman in a heterosexual relationship is going to do the bulk of stuff, right? Well, around so, the house, yeah. around the house. So for example, on my stories the other day that you may, may or may not have seen, there was cleaning out the shower, there was scrubbing the toilet, there's cleaning the fridge, there's all those things that more often than not falls on the woman. Now, I'm actually okay with our situation because you do things that I hate. And actually somebody said to me the other day, it was my friend Tits actually, she said, do you have blue pink chores, blue and pink chores? I thought, oh my God, is that a thing? Do people say blue and pink? And she said, yeah, like I'm a thing. Or like picking up dog shit. Yeah. Taking so, the girls to dentist. So I said, you know, I, why do I feel I'm going against the sisterhood or the feminist hood if I say there are, I do personally like the way our jobs go? Mm. Mark isn't going to want to clean out the fridge in a million years. He's not going to know what to do with it. He's not going to... It's a horrible job. But then so is putting the rubbish out. Mm. I hate putting the rubbish out. Ever since I was a little kid, even Hardly putting the job. milk bottles out... But over 20, 30, 40 years... It's the recycling it's a that's lot the really job. annoying one because no one understands recycling. Yeah. No so, like, one. even when I was a little kid, when I used to put the, the milk out on the doorstep, I used to get really depressed when I came back. And I'd get, like, this fear and anxiety going out into the night and putting stuff. It's just a weird thing. And mm. I'm the same with the rubbish. I absolutely hate it. So, it's always fallen that you do the rubbish. We've never sat down and gone, okay, you do the rubbish, which means I do the fridge, which no, means no, I do... I know. And, like, I, I, I don't want to go in the garden for hours and hours and hours. You do it, and you do it really well. But then you will never have washed the floors in here. No. And it's like, so I'm saying for us, it actually works quite well. But also, but also I would say within that, we've talked about it, I can't remember, well, we've talked about it many times before, where sometimes there's a little bit in both men and women, mm. uh, a desire to be annoyed. So sometimes it's not just about being annoyed by what someone doesn't do. A lot of people want the annoyance of being annoyed. Because maybe they're annoyed about something else. They might be annoyed they about something else, but also they might feel a bit sorry for themselves and they like feeling sorry for themselves and people like feeling put upon and people want the aggravation. I mean, I think I can think of countless relationships I've been in where the other half or myself have wanted to feel... Martyred. Oh, no, God, you know, and actually if that was dealt with or whatever it was you were moaning about was dealt with every day all the time, you try and find something else because you just want to be in a position of moaning. And I think that creeps into a lot of relationships without it necessarily being a, an awful thing. I think familiarity means mm. that sometimes... So, for example... Breeds contempt. For example, I would never dream of, doing, of washing the floor, not because I don't actually want to wash the floor, though who does? I don't think anyone does. But I know that I do it wrongly. And you look at it and you go, oh, no, he should have done it like this. I quite like the act of hoovering, but I won't do it because I know that I'll do it incorrectly. So... There are some yeah, things but, that... but okay, well, I can hear people screaming as you say that. You are a graduate with a first degree, yeah. right? right? Okay, are you telling me that you couldn't, if you said to me, how do I actually wash this floor properly? I wash... And I tell you, you wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, no, I probably would, so Mark. tell me. But, but, you're... but I don't want you to, yeah, I'm exactly. finally washing the floor. For example, you just mentioned the fact that I'm a graduate with a first degree. That's why one of the other tasks Sorry. that we often have... Uh, a, a first class degree. Um, <laughs> so, so, the, I'm sure I've said that wrong. Yeah, first degree. Yeah. <laughs> like first degree um, murder. Um, but for example, there are other tasks. There are the menial tasks. But if we have difficult letters to write, if we have difficult things to negotiate through the written word and stuff, we'll, it will always fall to me. Yeah, to that's do what that. I'm saying. And I'm I think happy we... to do that. And for example, the dogs, which have been so demanding in terms of pets, vets and, and the rest of it. I, I understand that that's part of my, my, my thing. Dri but I also, driving. No, was... but I also noticed you were doing so much of the vet. Unfortunately, the first time Chi Chi was really ill, I was away. And what do I say to you now always? I'll come with you. I'll oh, keep no, my yeah, car. No, not, no. no. Not complaint. I accept no, no. it. No, I'm not saying it's a complaint. What I'm saying is I recognise that and I thought that's not fair. Mm. And so I 
said, right, let's do this together. So I think that is the nub of this, is like, if you're not noticing those things, then, because I do notice, like you always drive, you always drive, and I always feel bad about that, but then I go, well, I'll always cook and I'll mm. always do the shopping. So it is about, it's not about when you did this and I did that, but I think it's just a general caring for the other person and mm. saying, are they taking a bit too much on here? Mm. Have they got all of this on their shoulders? How could I take some of this on their shoulders? And he talks about that. He talks about how many times did she say, can you just not leave your socks there? And can you, can, look, the dishwasher was empty. Mm. Could you? Like one thing for me that I absolutely hate, and this isn't you, this is all three of you, nobody would ever think when they go and they've got something dirty and the dishwasher's full to empty that dishwasher. It's the most, no, I, I and, admit and like it. Sometimes it's the most I'm like, thing. I'm like, I just wish once one of them would do it and you've never done it. And he, hang on a minute, let me just say, and he talks about that. He talks about him and his sons all doing the same thing mm. to his wife who consistently said, please, can you not? Okay. So... And I well, know that that's resonated. Small certainly. example now. You said to me, please, can you not use um, detergent e type mixes when cleaning the surfaces? No, I never it's, said that. Yes, ever. you did. You I said, said please, can you clean the surface? No, no, you said don't spray. spray oh, when you spray, were spraying spray. Yeah, exactly. Spray, yeah. For me, that was the, 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 right. The liquid is designed for this purpose. But you were spraying the fruit, huh? The spray is not going to kill you because they wouldn't use it on kitchen surfaces. But it tastes if it, disgusting. If it, it might taste disgusting. And it's the got fruit tendons. bowl was easily moved to the dining table, but even if I used it still, you would be absolutely kind of weird about me ever using spray stuff. It was so that was my preference. It was easy. It's what oh sold to people. It's what the majority of people who clean set. So I've listened to you, and I now run a really hot bowl of hot water, pour in the washing liquid, and I do it the way that you want. So I've listened to you. I've listened to you. Yeah, but I you, hear you, you, I hang you on, have I hear you. The size of a large portion on your shoulder about that. Like nobody could breathe for the rest of the night. You were showing off. <laughs> you were showing off with the cleaner. So let and me, it did let me just say really this. Let me just say this. So I, then I hear for a long you about while, the dishwasher. You moved to not wiping the sides at all. <laughs> so you would clear up the kitchen and I'll come in and there'd be blobs of gravy and like peas stuff. And the rest of the kitchen would be tidy, but you would not have wiped the surface off. So though. this is a really good this example of the eating away at a person. Yeah, but it's changed. Yeah, it's good. It's great. And you know what? It's really nice that sometimes you wash up now. Can I also say that I fully put my hand up and say there's nothing worse than the prospect of emptying a dishwasher. It's just the most hideously depressing prospect, almost at all People in the kitchen. People are going to be saying spot wrap. Well, no, 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 no. Well, no, but my, no, but I was about to say, that's why I hate dishwashers. Just, I'm a big fan of washing up at the sink because then what you've got on the side has to be dried and put away. I hate, dishwashers are for lazy people. I think we've gone off on one of it. But I think what we've proven is that these things run deep. Also, an another, things... another detail, for example, I remember years ago, a male friend of mine, um, his girlfriend, in fact, complaining about having to go through his clothes to wash them. I've never liked anyone ever washing my clothes. I'm not, that's not to say I don't leave clothes like you in the wrong places, da, 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 I accept that. I try not to leave stuff in the downstairs loo anymore if I have showers and stuff like but you that. But you're not pulling it off. You're not pulling off not leaving your pants. Okay, and not as not, often. Like, I'm petrified. If somebody were to come round all of a sudden and want to use the loo, I'd have to charge in there. Yeah, but not as often downstairs. I know, because I'm not going in there in the morning staggering for my clothes. So I know I know it must be better. But um, but I've never, ever, ever wanted some. So I've always made it my business to know how the, how the washing machine works, all that kind of stuff, because I want to wash my own clothes. And I didn't realise that for a lot of people, the woman, unfortunately, does all the washing of the clothes for everyone no, in the family. I think the majority of people do, actually. And well, I just... The majority of women do. do the washing for... Yeah. For why, would you want, why would your wife want to go through your dirty pants and dirty socks? Do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I don't particularly want to go through yours either. So everyone do your own washing. So I think, you know... I, but it's just quite interesting. Uh, just, just off the back of this I article. I she says it's quite interesting. No, no, it is, because it, it is. And as I say, I think I think that, that we do share a lot of stuff. And I, I'm not somebody that would say... I feel I should oh, cook. I would like to cook more. I'm not somebody that would say, 
oh, you know, my husband doesn't do anything and I'm doing, because I don't, I don't feel like that. I think for a lot of our lives we do share, but it's just interesting when I say the things that do, you tell me that's not so. No, no, it's not, I don't, I don't leave my clothes on the floor. You always do, Mark, every single time. And you leave your trainers in the middle of the downstairs loo. So like, if then the shower is wet, then I've got your teeth. I haven't been showering for the last four to six weeks. No, no, I've no, never but I'm baths. saying if somebody else has showered, you just leave your trainers on the wet floor. But anyway, but anyway, and he talks about that. He said, when it, when she would tell me stuff, I would deny that that was her truth. It's like, it's not, that's not the case. I did move myself, so I did. Anyway, eventually she just didn't fancy him anymore anyway. because she'd said to him, I feel like your mother. And she'd said that to him many times and he hadn't taken that on. And it, eventually that eats away at like being able to any communication and it eats away at your sex life. Because if you feel like you're mothering your partner the whole time, that takes away the fancying, mm. the frisson. It all goes out the window if you're constantly... Well, let's read some of the comments. Can I just say, though, I also think that, I mean, maybe our situation has helped somewhat because you're so chaotic and mucky. Exactly. And I'm messy. not, so that you, well, not you, mucky, but I'm No, messy. no, not mucky and horror. But, I mean, you know, you, you can hardly hold up, hold yourself up as a paragon of virtue around tidiness and, and keeping things... Do you know what I mean? So, in that sense, we're kind of... We're Equal. Kind of like, I've never wanted to have a row about what, washing up, you know, and if we're both knackered, we go, well, let's just leave it. So, we are very lucky like that. But... Sometimes, as a family, like if I've cooked a meal, it's really nice last night, you and Maddie cleared up and stuff, but for a long time, before recent times, because you've changed it, I've been doing it every single time. Mm. Every single time, and like, and I keep waiting for somebody to just offer, because if you ask, oh, it's like you're a nag, and you're like, oh, can we do it after? And that was like really starting to piss me off, because I thought, oh, God, I mean... You know, when you've cooked them and you've done and then you're knackered at the end of the day and, and it takes five minutes for us all to do it and it will take an hour for me to do it by myself. Yeah, can but I you, just, I've noticed you've changed that recently. Can I also just say, though, I do think, by and large, men are emotionally quite lazy. And so when, when you read That's out this cool. article and you, and you showed me it, I just thought, you know what? Men are, and, and this is a gross generalisation, I mean, men at our worst are just great big boys that flobble around without really any regard. You only have to go into the, and I'm sorry to use this analogy, but you do, sorry about the noise in the background. Um, you, you only have to go into a toilet, a football match, to get an absolute close-up sense of what a disregard most men have yeah. for hygiene, for the space of others, for privacy, and for any kind of considerate thinking of other people in any way, shape or form. I mean, I go into public lab, and that's not to say I've ever left the toilet always in a perfect state, but I do actually, as a, as a man, uh, alongside other men I've known, you go into some toilets and I'm staggered. There's shit up the back of the toilet. You know, it's absolutely hideous. You think, what has this man done in it? It's like leaving up the toilet seat. It's just the most irritating thing for women. We just hate it so much because we've got to touch it, put it down. It's gross, and so many men do that. But men also so, don't want to touch toilets that have been put down. I mean, there's. I mean, I have to just say this. There's this idea that it's only a an onerous task for women to put the toilet seat down. A lot of men don't want to put the toilet seat up because they don't want to touch the underside of a toilet seat. Mm. You know, it Should cuts both ways. <laughs> so look under your toilet seat, men, and see what you notice. Emily Headley, wiping the pubes and piss off the rim of, rim of the toilet once a day. These I are the things that I, when I ask, what are the things that eat away at your relationship? God almighty. Knowing, I suppose, if you let me fill that in for you, Emily, that nobody else will ever do it. Right. That's the thing. It's like, from now until the day I die, it's going to be me that does that. I, I, can I just say, though I don't flag it up, whenever I go to the loo, I'm not saying I do it all the time, but I will check if yeah, it's... Yeah, OK, but don't need to go into too many details. Well, you went there. Yeah, all right. Tons and tons of stuff about the toilet. It comes up over and over again. I can't read them all out because there's so many saying it's the toilet. Number one has to be not cleaning the toilet. You know, he's never cleaned the toilet. He's never thought about cleaning the toilet. Cleaning his piss up every day. It goes everywhere. Uh, so we've got an anonymous one here. Changing his bath towel. If I didn't, well, I dread to think, lol, and oh, on. Can I just say, I never managed to hold on to my bath towel before someone else has come and did it. I'm always <laughs> running around the house asking people, where's my bath towel? I must say, Kiki does keep seeing it. It's Kiki's stealing your bath towel. Uh, 
uh, Midge Cotton that I've been with my husband for 28 years and he doesn't still doesn't know what I like to eat. Listen to that, that yeah, tiny yeah, that thing, is... but that's like... But that's one of those challenging you questions. If you were know. challenged to say, I wouldn't know what to say about you, what you like to eat. I know you Come like on, salads. Mark, you better know. No, I know, but if you check, if you sat there and held a gun to my head, I think, well, in different moods, she likes all sorts of different things. She likes, you know, those weird green things you get in Itsu that you suck the pips out of and they're salty. What are they called? Indami beans. She likes every type of salad Mitch in Cotton, the world. It might have started to row for me and Mark there. Um, Mrs. Stewart talks while eating and then complains when I can't hear what he's saying. That's annoying. That is annoying. Um, Sammy Kate also... Oh, and she says, I'm deaf as well. Oh. That's doubly annoying. Sammy Kate also, when I was in hospital, he phoned to ask which appliance was the washing machine. Every morning I'd get up, feed the dogs, unload the dishwasher before he gets up. That's what everyone always says at Loose Women. By the time their fella's woken up, we've done like all that sort of stuff and everyone gets so annoyed about that whenever we have this discussion. Um, Leo, leaving his dirty socks in his pants. So to wash them, I have to put my hand inside his pants. Isn't it I could see how that would eat away at you. Isn't it funny how pants, I mean, for saying, you know, couples are intimate and they're all right with that, the pants, the, the, the leftover discarded pants are a hideous detail of marriage and relationships. I mean, I'll Mildred. never forget a comedian years ago saying something about, how, it's very funny in their stand-up, they said, have you noticed how when you're young and you meet a girl or a woman or you, know, you kind of you had sex, da, da, da. have you noticed how when their knickers come off, they, they go down to about that size and they're, you're searching for them in a room because they've become the size of a yeah. But the weird thing is that we're, we can all have sex, we can all be intimate, we can all lie in bed together, you know, just da, da, da. And yet each other's pants is just... There's something, it's almost like it's too disembodied from the person when you yeah. come across them. It's that like you go, porn. No, it's like, can there's I... No, there's no emotion attached can to I just the ask, pants. Yeah, no, no emotion, absolutely. It's like, it's like, it's like a, it's like an exhibit in a crime scene, isn't it? It's like an item of evidence of something awful and untoward. But I do want to ask, I want to ask if there's any men here or any women with men like this, how, and I, I know you're going to say, oh, Mark, how and why, because... You know, don't forget, lots of men are on the receiving end of other men's toilet habits because we use public toilets. How, on any level, can a man shit up the back of a toilet? I do not, and I see it so often. They must have no sense of where the anus hole is, where the toilet is, and they just ram it up against the back yes. and go. It's okay. hideous. Let's move on. I know, because my thoughts go <laughs> to the... Sorry, my thoughts mark. go to the women yeah, or okay. the partners right. of these men You don't have home. to be so graphic. People are going to turn off. They're not. You're just gonna shut share up. My fury. You're doing it by going into such bloody detail. You're doing the very thing that you say is disgusting. Right, Sam Garnham, when he mumbles under his breath, then when you ask what he said, he says he didn't say anything. No. <gasps> God. Oh, it's the most annoying thing. Oh, I know it. Nothing. We do it to each other. I know that something that used to drive you mad, and I've really, really worked on it, and I hope you've sensed this, is when I'd say something barbed and I'd say I'm only joking. Oh, that's my most hated. It nearly broke us up that. Yeah, no, but I mean, I've heard Because that. it's his way of saying yes. something, but then me, yes. but silencing my voice back. Right, I've just it. given you that one. Emma, him going to the toilet for a wee and not flushing it, it makes my blood boil. Kirsten, how lazy my husband is. It's not a quality I admire. Kerry, having to bleach the toilet after he's sat on it and left his mark for all to see. How can he leave that for you? Yeah, I mean, use a toilet brush. Teddy, picking his head. I just want to try and get something. Picking his head? Yeah. Uh, made by me. Empty shower gel, mouthwash bottles left in the bathroom. Empty shower gel. That, that. Well, to be honest with you, I don't use any of yours. And, and you all, you all. All use my body wash. All of Darling, you. Darling, can I just tell it you moves something? From can I just tell you something? And this is going to be men. painful for you, right? I don't like your body wash. I don't like the smell Someone of it. Someone else does. And I wish you didn't Someone use else it because I don't like the smell of it on you. I like the Which? nice aftershave I bought you. And I have to smell that horrible what? body wash. I Links. don't like that. Don't stop accusing no, me it's of using simple. your body wash. It's simple soap. You love simple soap. It's Dove. I use Dove. Dove body wash. You don't, you don't... Yes, I do. I don't use Lynx anymore. I use Dove 
body wash. You're oh, smelling I'm not someone else. Dove. Where's the dove? I like dove. It keeps going everywhere I'm oh, not. Oh, and the other oh, final thing on this. Who buys other... shower gel just for themselves anyway? Because you all buy your own stuff. I don't. Yes, you do. I use my shampoo, actually. Well, there you go. You buy your own shampoo. And on that note, really... every time I need a razor, you've all pillaged my razor fucking packet. Right, made by me. Mugs left in the bathroom, drinking tea on the loo. Oh I'm God. now lost. I, You poor woman. How can you bear Why that? Why does that bother her if he's doing it on his own? Sat on Drinking leave a cup. Tea. Does it matter what he does in there? Oh, it's disgusting. Yeah, but she's not in there with him. No, but then he leaves the mug for her oh, to well, clear that, up. That, that's not nice. Yeah, the mug being left. Um, the making kids pack lunches. Oh, what if you've done that year after year after year after I year love by making yourself? Pack lunch. Oh, look, somebody here, anonymous, and all she's put is breath. Oh. He must have bad breath. Oh no, that's bad. God, we did a whole topic on that on these women. Oh, How do you tell someone they've got bad breath? Thank, thank God we haven't had that problem, eh, hey, Nads? Um, random, but he sprays too much spray deodorant. It's unbelievable. Oh, my God. Right, OK. We could skip over this one without really thinking about it, but it's what Mark and I just spoke about, isn't it, with these... I'm cleaning the sides. I'm, I hate that when people go... If this is the exact thing. This is the nub of this podcast. Those little things. And she may have said to him a couple of times, please don't do that much. So it totally fumigates the bathroom. And it's just so unnecessary. And it's so wasteful. And he has no regard for is it. He doesn't listen to her. Is there any point in all of this that one turns around and goes, hang on a minute. There's a lot of annoying drip, drip, drip behaviours. But on the other side of the equation, there's some pretty highly strong individuals who need to take a chill pill. Yeah, there are some people. That I mean, if spraying them. deodorant annoys you. No, I hear her. I hear. I'm with you. i tell you something that I do actively <laughs> take no <laughs> interest in. I've got to do in. this one. She hasn't put anonymous, but I think I'm going to choose to make it anonymous. Just looking at my husband grates on me. Oh my God, that's, you've got to get out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's over. That's over. How can you be with someone? Oh, and I've got to read this one from Nicola because this is across the global, this is. Not putting his dirty dishes in the dishwasher. Oh, my God. Well, look. Washing dishes under the tap so they get wet but aren't ever clean. Oh, I hate, that. I hate that. But listen, I, we're getting to the end and we're having to rush off to do the thing, which is those who exercise together stay together, um, which isn't true, as I've just proved at the beginning of this uh, podcast. But listen... <laughs> One thing I actively dodge, I actively hate, and I have done since dot, is doing the bed linen. That, that is a horrendous job, taking the sheets off, taking the duvet cover off, and then even worse is, I can possibly get everything down to the washing machine, but I'll never, ever put it back on. And when you have an occasion, very rarely call me to help with the duvet, wow, so I tight. literally am reminded of when I was a student and I was like, I can't, I literally I can't hate it. do I hate this. That job There's so nothing much. worse than finding the corners as some smart ass has told you in the path. One corner, two corner, <laughs> shake it, it turn it inside, out. shake it down. But then the worst, as if you've only just managed to get that done and then you discover that the duvet cover is the wrong size for the fucking duvet. You then go to fucking do the buttons and they never fit. And then when they do fit, you've done them out of order. And then one bit of du duvet pokes out of it. So there you go. Oh my God, there's so many. Do you know what? I'm going to have to do some sort of Instagram thing to get all these messages out because I want all these women to feel they've been heard on this. And they're great. There's so many fantastic ones. And it's just, I think it's a really important topic. I think marriages could be saved with this and I think we should do something on Instagram. The drip Instagram. drip, one final drip drip effect that I do find really intolerable is the fact that Nadia's teeth and her eyes can be on all surfaces yeah. anywhere at Contact all times. Lenses. And you've done a little bit of a something about your chewing gum, though I did wake up the other day with a literally a piece of chewing gum on the end of my nose. This is a good one. Just Posh bird. Take it in. Take it in. He leaves his big puffer coat on the armchair or on the floor in the lounge. I hate him for it i know what you mean those people those massive coats and they just keep putting them over luckily i'm very messy too with my coats so mark's coat could irritate me but i'm never going to say anything because i'm just as bad listen guys we've got to go 
But I'm gonna we're gonna think of some way that we can do the rest of these Sorry, messages I, and I, talk about this further. I, I literally love this every topic. time as we're about to go, they're all coming back to me. Nadia's ability to have items of clothing and bags on every single chair around the dining I, I'm table. I'm terrible. It's absolutely 18 pairs of shoes in the kitchen. I know. 